Visit sayaright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to make a platform cushion. This is a cushion that staples to a back or board. We'll also show you how to use a fabric calculator to help you determine the amount of materials and how to cut the fabric to size. Hi, I'm Eric Grant from Sayerite, and today we're going to redo this bench. Now, we're not redoing it because it's a, a mess. It's actually beautiful, except for we're going to be changing the fabric. And I've already unscrewed the four screws on the bottom, and if you take a look at this here, it has uh, basically tucked in tufts in it. And we're going to show the process of how to do that. It's basically a straight stitch here and a straight stitch here and here. And then they have a pole that goes through the foam and is stapled to the backer board. And in this video, we're going to show you how to do that with whatever fabric you select at Sailrite. First, we're going to remove the staples and the fabric poles from the backer board. Okay, we're just going to pull the staples from the uh, cambric dust cover on the back side. We'll probably be replacing this unless we, da unless we don't damage it much. Here are the fabric poles on the back side. Next, we'll re be removing all the staples uh, on the bottom side here. So these are the poles that create those uh, indents or tucks in the top. So we just pull the staples out of there, that releases them. So now we can remove the cover and inspect the foam to see what kind of shape it's in. Here are these fabric poles. Oh. Yeah, there we go. We're coming right through. See how the top stitching went right through the foam? It actually pulled right through. If you use a sew foam with a fabric backing, this will not happen. That's what we're going to use. Now, we're going to reuse this foam. It's actually not that uncomfortable to sit on. Um, it's not bottomed out. I did lift it up and it is that basically that cheap carpet foam that you find underneath your carpet. It's obviously thicker, so it's particles of foam that makes it fairly firm. If I were replacing this, I would probably replace it with a high density uh, firm foam uh, in uh, probably a two inch thickness. Um, but uh, we're gonna just use this because that makes the job uh, cheaper and quicker for you. You can take any kind of furniture like this and just recover it. Uh, this foam has been glued here. This has come up a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use foam lock spray adhesive. You want to shake the can a little bit first. We'll let the solvents evaporate a little bit and then we'll restick that down. So after the solvents have uh, evaporated out a little bit, we can restick that in position so it doesn't move. And we'll set this aside for now. In this chapter, we're going to do some measuring and we're going to show you how to use the Sayrite Fabric Calculator. Our finished cushion was 18 inches by 39 inches. Here we're measuring the old fabric from cut line to cut line. It's 39 and a half and along the width, 18 and a half. The extra half inch for the width and the length is added for seam allowance. This boxing was already cut down in size after it was stapled to the backer board, so we need to add extra fabric for that, typically about 5 inches for the thickness of 2 inch foam that we have. Use the Sayrite Fabric Calculator to help you determine the amount of materials you'll need and also how to cut the fabric to size. To do this, go to the Sayrite website and scroll all the way to the bottom until you see Fabric Calculator. Click on that. Now you'll see multiple projects. We want the cushion projects, so we'll click on that. Then, for our, this type of cushion, it's called a platform cushion. We'll click on that and enter our measurements. Our cushion is 18 by 39 inches, and it's 2 inches thick, and we're using a 54-inch wide fabric. If your fabric has a pattern, you may want to orientate the plate and the boxing differently. You can click on those buttons and experiment. Scroll down to the panel rendition and you can see how the plate and boxing is orientated on the fabric. Go back up and click on length for boxing and you can see that the boxing is now running up and down along the running length of the fabric. 
the fabric we selected has a stripe and we want that stripe to run across the length of the plate. So we'll go back to the top and click length for the plate. And we want the boxing stripe to run along the width, so we've selected that. So this is how we want our cushion orientated. Scroll back up a little and you'll see the key dimensions and a list of materials with quantities indicated. And each one of these links are a hyperlink, so you can purchase what you need at the Sayrite website. So I'm going to cut a top plate, 39 and a half by 18 and a half. I'm going to cut five inch wide boxing, so I need two strips that are 39 and a half, which is the same um, uh, length as my boxing here, by five, two of those. And then the ends is 18 and a half by five, and that will account for our seam allowance at the corners. Now, <coughs> I have a striped fabric, as you can see here. So I've kind of roughly drawn out the cushion, and I want my stripe to go this direction, like that. And for the boxing, I don't want it to go that same direction. It usually looks better to have the stripe go up and down on the uh, boxing like that. Next, we'll cut the boxing and the top plate to size. So furniture fabric or upholstery fabric, you can see here, you can stretch it out of shape. So what I want to do is I want to stretch this in shape and I want to take off the selvage edge here. So I want this to be nice and straight looking. So this is the back side and I'm just going to mark a line with a scryball black pencil. This is the back side so that mark will never show up. And I want to make sure that my fabric is nice and straight when I do this. And if it isn't, you can sometimes just do this and that'll straighten it along the salvage edge here and then strike your line. So now I'm going to place my clear acrylic ruler at the five inch mark on top of that line we struck. And then we'll strike a line here. This is our uh, boxing. And we need two strips of this. This is a little bit longer than 39 and a half inches, so we'll be cutting it to size after we're done. So I've cut three strips. That'll give me uh, two long strips, and I'll be able to cut this one to 18 and a half. Okay, now we just cut these all out with a hot knife, or if you don't have a hot knife, you can use scissors. A little bit of raveling on the inside of the cushion will not be a big deal because nobody will ever see it. So it's your choice. So now we're marking our top plate on the bottom side. We want the stripe to go this direction. So there's my mark, and I'm just going to use this stripe and cut right along it all the way down its length. Sewing boxing together is next. Our top plate is done. Our boxings are all done. You can see the stripes going this direction and this direction. Notice that the Boxing is exactly the same size as the plates, as far as length goes. And the half inch seam allowance to sew these pieces of boxing together, because they're going to go outside surfaces facing each other, you're going to sew a half inch here. And you may say, well, that's going to um, make this smaller, and it will. But when you sew the boxing onto the plates, it's also going to steal a half inch here. So that's why the uh, boxing and the plates should match up after all the boxing is sewn together. So I've laid this one on top of the end one. Outside surfaces are facing each other. We'll sew a half inch here. And then we'll um, place this one on top and sew a half inch here. And then we'll come back and we'll show you what we do here. So let's take this to the sewing machine. Outside surfaces are facing each other. I'm just gonna put the magnetic guide on here at the half inch location on the needle plate. We are going to sew with about a four millimeter stitch length, which I have it set up about there. Maybe it's a little bit smaller, but uh, I don't want it to be a very large stitch length. And I'm going to just sew across this, doing some reversing at the end. This is the other end piece, and so it's going to go on the other side here. I don't have to worry about any pattern matching uh, for this. It won't be too noticeable. I don't have any flowers or anything like that that need to be matched up. If you do, then you may want to consider that. Same process. Okay, now we're going to sew this piece on. We're going to turn it so it's right side out. Outside surfaces face each other. This gets sewn here, 
and over here on this end now we need to make sure that we don't have any twists in this so I'm just going to like lay it out flat and this would get sewn here so here and here so I've sewn one and uh, I'm not even going to lift the presser foot I'm going to sew the second one just going across at that location saves time In order to create the pleats, we need to add sew foam. That's next. So I've cut a piece of sew foam a little bit bigger than our top plate here, as you can see all around the perimeter. Sew foam has a fabric backing on the back side, so we can prevent the stitch from pulling through the foam. That's the beauty of using sew foam. As we showed you, they did not have that, so the stitch pulled right through the foam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna glue on this side, not the side with the fabric backing with our foam lock spray adhesive. I'm going to do a horizontal um, run and then I'm going to do a vertical run. Okay, so I've laid the, I've folded this in half and I want to start at the middle position here. And it would be nice if I had two people to do this, but I don't. I want to make sure that this upholstery fabric does not have any um, bends in it. I want it to look nice and straight. If it does, I can peel it back up and reapply it because you do have some working time here. But I think that looks pretty good. I don't see any warpiness to it. I'm going to cut the sew foam and I'm not using my really good scissors for this. I'm using a pair that are kind of dull right along the edge of the fabric all around the perimeter. Why am I using bad scissors? Well, because the glue can build up on the scissors and you have to clean them off. Now we'll sew in the pleats and the fabric poles at the same time. So these are the top stitches in our old piece. And I pl placed this directly on top so that the ends are butted up to each other. And I just want to mark where those stitches should go. And I technically could just put it over here and match this up. Uh, or I could just use a straight edge and make sure that the that the lines are going straight across our fabric Then I'm also going to line it up from end to end because there's some there's three top stitches here So I'm going to make sure it's butted up to the uh, edge of the fabric on both ends which it is and I'm going to label the location for each one of those stitch lines there like that okay so now we'll use our clear acrylic ruler. I'm using a Sharpie marker for this. And I will put it across here, lining up this edge to make sure that it's straight with the bottom edge here. And strike a line on the bottom side. Nice thing about the clear acrylic ruler, we can see through and make sure that this uh, new line is, is uh, uh, perpendicular to the lines we struck down. So we can do that at three of these spots. I'm going to set my stitch length at a maximum six millimeters for the top stitch. And I've got some scrap fabric with some sew foam and I'm sewing up with the sew foam side facing up. I want to always test my tension to make sure that I'm happy before I sew my original piece. So that looks good there. The knot's definitely buried. And the top side also looks good. So I don't have to adjust my upper tension. Okay, I'm going to take some of the scrap fabric that I have and basically make ties about the same length here. So that means that I just need to cut it here and I'll make six ties very similar to these out of scrap. Okay, we're going to sew the along the small side first and then we'll put our tabs on when we go the long, long ways. Why are we doing that? Well, that's just what they did, so we're gonna repeat that. So I'm gonna start really close to this edge here. Typically, if I do any reversing, I wanna do it off of the half inch location, because I don't want that to show up in my top stitch. And all I do is just follow that line that I struck on the material. Real easy. 
And then here I'm going to do some reversing, but I'm going to make sure that I don't go deeper than a half inch. And then for the middle, what I'll do is I'll scroll this up a little bit, just so I can get underneath the arm of the sewing machine. Anytime you do any top stitching, you want to make sure you have a full bobbin. Again, I'm going to sew no deeper than a half inch inside the edge with the reversing. And then I'm going to sew down here. Now, when, before I reach this uh, cross stitch, I am going to lay this strip of fabric like this. And I'm going to do some reversing right in the middle of that. So I'm going to sew over this. And then at the middle position, I'm going to sew back just a couple times and then sew through. And I'm coming to the next one. So I'm going to take my fabric. It doesn't matter which way it goes because it's just a fabric pull. And I'm going to sew over this. Whoops, make sure I sew over it. Do a little bit of reversing and then sew to the next one and we'll do the same thing for all the other locations. We'll be joining the boxing to the top plate now. So we have the fabric pulls on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use quarter inch basting tape uh, for a canvas and upholstery and I'm going to go around the edge uh, so that I can pre-baste the boxing in place in the quarter inch size. Um, is perfect because we don't want this glue to show up after the uh, boxing is sewn on. Um, so if we used a 3 8 inch uh, seam stick, it would likely show up and that would not be good when we turn our cushion right side out. Now I'll peel off the transfer paper in this corner and we will line up the boxing so that outside surfaces will face each other. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to match up the stripe as I go here. So if I do this right, and I can technically pull on a little bit or stretch one more than the other. So see how I'm matching up this stripe? I did that when I cut this boxing out. But this stripe's so small, it's pretty easy just to kind of pull or stretch it a little bit. Can't find that stripe. Oh, there it is. So I'm shrinking it a little bit as I baste to get that stripe to line up. There we go. Now when we get to this side, we'll peel off the transfer paper. And obviously I don't have a stripe to line up here. And the corners match up pretty much perfectly. So when I baste, I don't want to pull on one panel more than the other because it can stretch the fabric. Uh, I only want to do that if things aren't lining up. And that's the beauty of the double sided tape. You can make sure that things line up uh, before you take it to the sewing machine and sew. Okay, I'm going to put the magnetic guide uh, at the half inch mark because that's what we're going to be using for seam allowance. I'm going to put my fabric in here and I'm going to start someplace in the center. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to reduce my stitch length just a little bit here, like to four millimeters or so, and we'll start sewing. I'm not going to do any reversing here. So now we just sew around the perimeter, and I'll show you what we do when we get to the corner. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually splay this down like that at this corner. Let me make sure that's basted right where I want it, right there. So watch. So I'm going to fold this back, this, this one side. And make sure it goes underneath that presser foot. And sometimes you have to use something to get it to go underneath the presser foot. There we go. Now there's my stitch right here. So I'm going to stop sewing at that stitch. Right there. Bury my needle. Have the needle come up slightly. Lift my presser foot. Roll on the buried needle 
and then I'm going to take this part and I'm going to pull it back like this and lower my presser foot. And I'm not quite against the magnetic guide here, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to work my way over there again. There we go. Now, because everything was pre-basted in place, then hopefully everything is going to um, stay right where it needs to be while we sew this up. There's my stitch, so I'm going to come up to it. I can use a reverse lever if I need to make sure that the needle buries in one specific spot, which is right there. Needle came up, left my foot, rotate around, kick this around, and then sew down this side. Don't forget to lower your foot. There's foam in here, so it looks like your foot's lowered. If you don't lower your foot, you're going to have sewing problems. We'll just do this all around the perimeter. Now, even though that we basted this together, sometimes because of all this foam thickness, uh, the, out, the top surface won't walk as fast as the bottom. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that my stripes are lined up. And then I, sometimes if I notice that they're starting to, to be pulled this way, which is what's happened, is I'll actually push the top boxing in as I sew. And then I'll check after a little bit and make sure that my stripes are still lining up and it looks like it needs to be pushed in a little bit more. Stapling the cushion to the backer board is next. Okay, we're going to put the poles through the hole and I'm just going to use an Allen wrench and poke it through until it comes out the bottom side. There, that one's through. Got to find the hole. That one's through. So we keep doing this to all of the poles before we start fitting the cover on. If you don't have a T-handled Allen wrench, as Bill said, you could use a coat hanger. <laughs> Finding that hole in the board is the most difficult thing. Okay, so all of the poles are now through the bottom side. Okay, so now we'll fold the boxing around and make sure that the corners are tucked out, not tucked in. Want to kind of center it. Make sure that uh, the seam is in the same spot on the left side and the right side. We're going to start here on the two long sides at the middle position. Before we staple on the fabric, we're going to be covering these holes and it's a good idea to know where the holes are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put a line from, from a screw hole to screw hole so that I know that the hole is uh, in line with that. I'm going to do that here too. So this is the middle position and, and I'm going to pull it fairly snug and I'm going to put a preliminary staple in, kind of crooked like, so that I can pull it out if I don't like it. Two of them in. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing, pulling it snug and put two preliminary staples in place so that I can inspect the top surface and make sure that I like where my seam is falling. Looks like the seam is falling a little bit further down here than it is here. So I'm going to pull probably this side a little bit tighter or either release this side. I still haven't decided yet. So because I put those staples in crooked like it, they're really easy to get pulled right out. So I'm going to release a little bit of tension here. Take a look to see if I like it. So my seam look over here and over here looks about the same. So I'm going to keep that tension on and I'm going to put the staples in more permanently there. Okay, then I'm going to put some staples at this midway section here, trying to keep it all in a line. And then this midway section. So 
So we're trying to go for a straight line here, and uh, that is the key. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to get everything so that it's in line, and I haven't got a ton of staples in it yet. I'm just trying to get it in the preliminary spot. And then once I'm happy, I'll put a staple in and then continue to do this. And we want to do this all around the perimeter. As we go around, it, it, it uh, matters where the soap foam lies. So what I'm trying to do is lay the soap foam so that it's not uh, impeding the way that the, round, the edge looks. We want it to be nice and smooth there. So you just have to work with that soap foam so that when you pull the fabric, it's nice and smooth. Because if the soap foam's laying up here, it's a big ridge. Okay, for the corner application, once you're happy, and we are happy with everything and the way it's laying, Probably could make it a little bit tighter there. So I just pull a little bit of extra fabric and bam, a little bit more here. So we just want to go around the perimeter, make sure everything's pulled tight, that everything feels good. Your sew foam's laying the right way you want it. So it gives a good, nice feel. Make sure this is as straight as possible and put your staples in around the perimeter. Then when we get to the corner, um, we have a staple here. So we'll put one here. And then we'll just kind of butterfly this open like that and pull it fairly taut. And we will put a couple staples in at that, like that. We'll do that at all the corners. So on the back side, these poles will start pulling on them and notice what it does here. So you can put as much pressure as you want to put as deep of a uh, indent in this as you'd like. And I want them to be fairly similar so I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we could go even deeper, but I think it's actually pretty good just like that. So what I'm gonna do at, at, at that amount of tension is I'm just gonna put one staple in here and we'll get them all to about this same divot and we'll put one staple in there. And then if we need to make adjustments to any of them, we can pull that staple and redo it. Okay, when you're done, inspect it. Remember, you only have one staple in each one, but if you wanna go deeper with one or go less, now is the time to change it. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, the one that we took off is not in too bad a shape here, so I think we're just gonna reuse it again. Though Sarite does sell this if, uh, if you need a replacement one, and it's a uh, cambric dust cover material. So here's the line. We almost put the dust cover on all the way. Remember the line indicating where our hole is? I can feel the hole right here. So I'm gonna mark it uh, with a Sharpie so I can cut into that hole. Here's the line over here. I can, yeah, there's the hole right here. So I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie so we can get our screws back in there. We'll do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna take a razor blade and kind of cut an X here so that we can drive our screw into each one of these locations. And we'll just keep putting staples around the perimeter to kind of hide the raw edge of the fabric. So now we'll put the legs on and we'll put our screws in. and our reupholstery job is done. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to give us a call and also be sure to subscribe to the Sarite YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools list. You can find hundreds of decor and upholstery fabrics that work great for a platform cushion like this at the Sarite website. If you need a great sewing machine, be sure to check out the Sarite Ultra Feed sewing machine and also the upholstery staple gun. It can't be beat for the price. From all of us here at Sarite, I'm Eric Grant. Thanks for watching.